Hello, everybody. Uh, so, paper, uh, Origins of a Modern Web-Based Biomedical Data Discovery Stack or Platform, whatever your terminology. So, uh, I'm going to first start kind of introducing the, the project uh, as, it, as it began, uh, known as AugenDB. So, this was kind of the timeline. Uh, the first couple of years was very much focused in uh, creating an audiology template for our uh, medical record system, EPIC in order to uh, provide the, the means of capturing data in a, in a kind of better and uh, reusable way for clinical research. Uh, there was a second phase which focused on kind of the proof of concept and focusing on taking that data that has been captured and creating an interface for it as a proof of concept. And my team and I actually came in uh, the tail end of 2008 into 2009 where we actually got involved more so to kind of expand on this, this, this project, expand on this idea. So the foundation of this was uh, uh, only made possible by these, pretty much these two factors, uh, the planned epic implementation by the audiology department, uh, kind of planned those, temp those uh, epic templates very well in order to uh, facilitate that data capture in a research friendly way. Uh, and the NIH grant that we also received. So second, second phase, like I was saying, the proof of concept, uh, it initially started out as a Microsoft Access database with, with a hand curated set of patients, roughly about 1,000, and they had a bunch of canned queries that were kind of very useful in those contexts, but uh, essentially what it came out to be was that the, our external advisory board that has been monitoring the project over the years uh, essentially wanted more. They saw the potential and they were like, we want more out of this. So. This is where we, uh, my team and I, stepped in. So I'm going to talk briefly about the data uh, because obviously a, any type of project is not that useful without some good data for clinical research. So some of the problems that we encounter and uh, kind of realize with clinical data is that it's typically very complex and, and messy in most cases. So the fact is, is that obviously the, the whole data model up front is never conceived at the start of the implementation. As time goes on, new processes get, get it put in place and you have to be able to capture that data so things are kind of uh, more or less band-aided together in, in a sense. So, which is great for clinical workflows because you're, you're able to kind of enter the data that you need for patient care and ultimately that, that's, that's what the perfect purpose it serves. For research, on the other hand, we want to be able to have cu very well curated sets so that we can kind of see see this data, ex explore this data. So this is a, a very simple example. So the top, top uh, chart right there shows kind of the typical layout of uh, clinical data in our system. Epic has this notion, or uh, the template of audiology uh, templates essentially has this notion of, of data points and these, these concepts. And uh, this is particularly for an audiogram result, an audiogram test. You can see the first line there is uh, the headers, like an Excel spreadsheet header kind of marks what the data points are. And then the three rows below that actually are the data itself. And this is what we have as raw data, and this is ultimately what we want in the bottom right-hand corner. So solutions with data is, is very simply doing the ETL process and um, essentially extracting all the, all the data and the, the patient data that we are interested in for this particular project, uh, curating it, putting it into a more research-friendly uh, data model, more or less, and uh, that has been refined over time as we've performed data curation on the on the, uh, the data itself. So we're like, all right, we have we have data, and this is currently what what we have in our uh, database. So we have over thirty-seven thousand patients, a whole bunch of procedures, encounters panograms and audiograms, which are audiology specific things. And uh, so we were like, great, that's good. So this was my proposed interface to uh, access all this data. <laughs> but um, I'm a bit of, uh, of a geek, so no one really liked the idea. So we were like, all right, let's, uh, let's move along and actually build an interface that, that might actually work. So our general approach, um, we had to think of obviously our constraints up front, right? So we had, uh, the, the goal of the project was to become a national research, resource, and we wanted to be able to uh, 
um, target as many people, as many institutions, clinical researchers, and whatnot as possible. So we needed it to be able to kind of distribute this, this, uh, this software or this, this application out to as many people as possible. We only had two software developers at the time uh, when, when we started this, so that was obviously a time constraint and manpower constraint. And like I was saying, we don't really have, uh, as a result, we don't have any resources to be able to actually distribute software out and then have help desk support and all those things. So we're like, all right, the platform, the web, works perfectly for this, for this type of uh, scenario. There's no installation required. We as a software developers are able to deploy this application on our servers. We host all the servers and anybody can simply use a web browser to access this. I mean, it's, this is, this is no different from Gmail or Google Docs or any of those web applications out there currently. It's a very convenient way, um, and virtually every device these days have web browsers, so you can eff effectively access it from anywhere. So a couple more kind of uh, more specific constraints that we were thinking about. Um, effectively, we want to have this interface to be intuitive. We want it to be discoverable, and I quote this because it's, it's means many different things, but essentially you want to be able to go in, really not have to know or have any training up front of saying like what, what is this software and be able to gradually learn and kind of understand what the, the capabilities of the, of the application as you, as you kind of uh, mess around. Um, you want it to be in a familiar language, so these, a lot of these, this data is, is specific to different domain expertise. and. Uh, you, they don't, you don't want to have them to have to learn a whole new language just because me as a programmer is like, well, this is the way I'm going to have it, so you're going to have to learn my language. You want to be able to fit into kind of the language of the domain experts. Don't want it to be intimidating. Shouldn't require any knowledge of the data model, which is a kind of a big, big deal with current query interfaces. They assume that you know how the data is structured, which you should not have to know how, to, how the data is structured. And then the knowledge of the data itself. I mean, this is the whole point of a discoverable interface, right? You want to be able to kind of learn and see what the data is in there, and you don't have to have any assumptions up front. So this is a very typical inter query builder interface. Um, I just pulled this off uh, Google Images. It looks like it's an IBM DB2 query uh, interface. And you can see it's, there's a lot going on. Um, and you have the kind of classic tree view on the left side kind of to navigate which tables and data elements you have. You have the uh, right-hand side, the big, the big area, which is, looks like an ER diagram, entity relationship diagram, and kind of connecting the dots there. And then right down all the way at the bottom is actually your results, your data. So this is definitely not what we wanted because this is very confusing even to me. So this is our interface, and um, I'm gonna demo it in a second. It's much less, many less buttons, which is uh, kind of the goal with this. Okay, so Harvest, what is Harvest? Harvest was derived from AudgenDB, the concept, the notion of, of what this project entailed. So the stack or platform or whatever you want to call it consists of three main components. We wrote the query engine on top of, of an existing framework that provides the ability to create dynamic queries at runtime. So it doesn't mean that you have to create all your queries up front for all these, all these reports that you want. You can literally provide the interface and any query is virtually possible in this case. So we have a, the second layer is the RESTful API, which is essentially a, a wrapper to this query engine that provides an interface over the web. And then we, we created that web client, uh, browser-based client that you saw. So the engine itself, the first part, consists of three main little pieces. You have a data definition, any kind of data that you want into the, in the system and made available to, to uh, the end users, they're called definitions. You have concepts. Concepts are effectively a collection of definitions in some, in, and formatted in some domain-specific way that makes sense to an end user. Just like you saw that audiogram response, it was response and decibels, and then you had three different values that are kind of like flags. And then a domain is very simply a collection of concepts. It's some domain, like you saw audiology and genetics and demographics. Those are our domains. So definitions, uh, this is a very, very simple thing. We, the fact that we have a database, we can extract a lot of metadata out of that. We know the data type. We know the controlled vocabulary in that data by doing, finding all the distinct values within that data. So we have a lot of, a lot of metadata in order to 
provide a clean interface to the end user. So this is what represents a single definition in this interface that you just saw. It's one little data point. So the response is one definition, masking is one definition, all four of those things are each one definition. Like I said, a concept is composed of many definitions. You can see the name, 1000 hertz response, and it actually includes those four data definitions. Okay? Because when an audiologist, audiologist thinks of 1000 hertz response, they include all four of those things. They don't think of just the response in decibels itself. So this is a kind of how you saw that output. You have the left side table, 1000 hertz response properly formatted versus the right side, which is kind of all over the place. So this is the concepts, domains, running out of time, so I'm speeding up, sorry. <laughs> domains, high level organization concepts, those are our domains, which is tabbed interface. And why the separation here? We have raw data definitions, they're great for machines, uh, readable formats, concepts are great for humans. We heavily focus on data discovery and uh, for, for, for humans, essentially. I'm going to skip this because this is not relevant at the moment. But essentially, the basic workflow of the client server, you can, you, the client, the browser, can say, what can I query? Server says, these are things you can query. And then you say, OK, well, I want this condition, P PTA between 50 and 70. It says, OK, here's your patient cohort. And then let me see this extra data. And then it simply sends back. The client server uh, relationship is very simple. And this allows you to have any type of client in order to communicate over this REST API. So I already kind of explained what the, the notion of a web app is. Uh, as, you, as you saw, it's very interactive. It's, it responds to your behaviors. We don't have time. So the final notes is AudgenDB presented a real problem in clinical research, and we wanted to create Harvest, which is completely uh, domain agnostic. It's not audiology specific at all. And we now have this platform that we can reuse. And in fact, we did in, in an internal project called CardioDB. We're very creative with our <coughs> names. Um, and it was this, the second successful implementation. And essentially, it, it reduced a report that used to take 24 hours to manually curate down to five to 10 minutes for radiation exposure. So we're the translational informatics. I have a group over here. <laughs> and uh, we like to find solutions for things and innovate. So thank you.